Welcome back everybody, back to the channel. I know it's been a while. We haven't done a video in some time, but life gets in the way of a lot of things, especially when you don't make money at a venture like this. So you have to kind of prioritize things over other things. But we are back today with a video. We were hoping for a different video, but the scheduling, trying to get that person here, when to do that video is going to happen. It's just a matter of time. But we recently got a hold of a 3D printer and we are gonna start manufacturing and making stuff ourselves. Today's build is not something we completely build ourselves. It's from Thingiverse. The link will be below in the video. So if you actually wanna make this build yourself, you can. But that being said, we are going to be building a controller and we have three parts. We have a bottom, a plate and a top. You think we're building a mechanical keyboard. We are gonna be using the Raspberry Pi Pico, one of the most inexpensive Raspberry Pis you can get a hold of, and they are readily available everywhere, pretty much. Uh, and you can buy them in patch, you can buy them in a roll if you wanted to, um, but they're only like seven bucks. And these things are extremely powerful if you want to make a fighting stick with it. The reason why is because the code is open source and it has less than one millisecond latency. It has some of the best response that I've ever used in any controller. That's including some of like the Brook Universal Fighting Boards, which are great, which we did a controller for. If you haven't checked out that video, go check it out. All right, now let's get into this build. As you can see, it's three different parts. We have a top, we have a plate to hold the switches and then the bottom. Um, and obviously this, like I said already, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and this build is on Thingiverse. Now, the only thing is like this print, it came out okay. But there's one thing, temperature does affect your 3D prints drastically and there was a window near it and this corner isn't so great. Uh, and I printed the top at like double speed because we're trying to get this video done. But, <laughs> so it ain't the greatest. So obviously this ain't gonna be a final, final build. I'll probably redo this project. But this is more to show you guys, it's really easy to build your own fight stick, especially if, a, if you have a 3D printer and you wanna make stuff, especially if you wanna make things like SD card holders. This is also from Thingiverse. It's a functional print, which means it actually prints functional. It already actually works. So there's a lot of great things you can do with 3D printer. And like I said, this is only seven bucks. Uh, basically we have to look up the wiring harness and to see where the wirings have to go, wire it up, uh, put the switches in, put it together and load the firmware onto it and see if it works. So let's first, uh, let's see if uh, we can get these switches into this plate first. Okay, so you know, these are Kali uh, chocolate V1s uh, that I'm gonna be using for most of the buttons. And then for these, actually the top option buttons here, I'm gonna actually be using V2s. And the, mostly the reason for that is I actually have no keycaps. I'll actually work with V1s for where, where these go. So, but I do have for V2s, so that's what it is. Anyway. Oh, and one thing, so I didn't talk about, so we're gonna be using, these are going to be our, our buttons. These uh, pieces, I didn't actually 3D print. These are actually manufactured from China uh, that I had sent out, uh, but we'll get to that later. But let's get uh, these in here and see how well they fit. As you can see, we have all our switches in. Uh, yeah, and they're kind of a hazard. You kind of can, I end up stabbing myself because it's a really tight fit because every 3D print is going to be slightly different um, the person that made it obviously had one 3D printer. He made it, worked out fine, uh, but it could be a very fraction of a millimeter off on your 3D printer or the filament's different that he used, brand of filament, type of filament. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, but we got them all in, they all fit, they all work. And if I actually put this on top, if I put it on the right way, we can start to see it coming together. So now we just gotta get the Pico all wired up, bring up the diagram and I'll bring up actually the wire diagram on screen so you guys can know actually what the wire diagram for this is. So if you want to build a fight stick, there also there'll be a link below. Now we have to solder wires and I know this is kind of a sense, well, cardinal sin to some technicians, but some not. Uh, we're using all the same color wire for everything. So, oh well, <laughs> that's all I could find actually on the moment. Uh, I, I'm sure I have tons of other wires somewhere, but I have no idea where the hell I put it. Anyway, so we're gonna start by soldering wires to the little Pico before we mount it. I think it'll just be easier that way. Uh, but first I'm gonna add some flux to the board and then start soldering. Thank you. 
So as you can see, I already added a whole bunch of, I already tinned the Pico. It's already ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna actually tin all of the pins on the actual, on all the switches. Um, but yeah, and tinning is basically, you're just getting a slight coating of solder onto what you're going to be soldering wires to. It just makes it easier instead of trying to add solder while you're trying to hold the wire and everything else. That's just way more work than you need to be doing at one time. So this is a lot easier to just tin your stuff before you start. Okay, as you can see, this is not the greatest solder job. And it's also the next day. <laughs> There's a reason for that. If you saw previously, get a little frustrated with the solder. I bought the solder that was recommended from a YouTube channel. I will not mention because I don't want to give them any bad press or anything like that. But I bought and hoping it would actually work pretty well, but it was absolutely crap and it wasn't sticking to anything. It was pretty terrible. Um, I would show you it, but I actually already threw it in the trash. And then I came back today, obviously, to rewire the rest of it and get some better wiring, actually. So it's not too bad. It's, it's not too uh, Mr. Uh, Paul standards, I can tell you that. He would be, he'd probably pass out. <laughs> if you're watching, Paul, this is pretty bad compared to what you do. Uh, but it's functional. It's, and for the most part, this is 3D printed. It's uh, for all intents and purposes. It's a prototype. Now we just gotta flash the software onto the Pi. And all you do is actually hold this little button in when you plug it into your PC and it should show up with a drive uh, for the Raspberry Pi. And all you gotta do is take that drive, open it up, download the software, the firmware that you're gonna actually need for this. The link will be below for that firmware. Um, and then you just drop it into the drive after you drop it in the drive, it will load up and it'll actually automatically like install itself and close the drive right out. Now, if you go into your controller settings on your PC, you will actually see there is an Xbox controller now connected. Okay, so what is our next step here? So our next step actually is to try to put, so it's a sandwich. So we're gonna put our sandwich together with our bottom, middle plate, and the top. Okay, so from what I read for the post for this, so you could use M12 machine screws uh, and it should work, but they don't exactly fit. Uh, they're pretty big, but they don't seem to grip. It could be the 3D print as well. We don't know. Uh, but either way, I'm just mounting the top plate to the middle plate. Oh, well, all we really need to test this because I'm gonna three, I'm gonna reprint this anyway and redo it. This is more in line testing this build to see if it works. Uh, and uh, I'll let you guys go through the process of how this does with all like the fumbles and the whatnot that go on. Um, and you can see the top plate is actually now secured with the bottom plate. Uh, just the bottom, the bottom housing is not there. Um, so we're gonna figure out a way to get that on there, hopefully. Okay, she's together. She's very rough, but we're gonna add some keycaps now and we got a handful of those and then we have these ones that actually had whoop. I had these ones actually manufactured from China and that'll be a future video of how we got that done and a whole controller that's gonna be built from it um, but yeah I found these little, little colorful ones uh, that we're gonna add to the buttons on top here so and we're gonna put them in any order because it doesn't matter We're just gonna pick them at random because this project is a very random project and it is it is like the controller that Jack built for the most part right now. <laughs> uh, so, and obviously these ones are going on and they have a little different uh, regular, it's not a, what do you call it? A cherry style, it has little two prompts. So it's the Kali Chocolate V1s. And the whole one, and the last one. Mm -hmm. oh. 
Now everybody, let's test this very, very rough controller. I'm not joking, this thing is rough. But it also is like the first time, like first week of using a 3D printer, some things came out actually amazing. This came out, yeah, okay. Uh, how a lot to do with the weather around this area because weather right now is changing drastically. Right now it's like nine degrees, tomorrow it's gonna be 60. Okay, everybody, so we have our wire in there, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we have the we have our USB plugged in. It's it's plugged in to a point where it's plugged in. Now we're gonna plug it into the computer and we're gonna play some Guilty Gear Accent Core Plus R to try the controller out. Okay. So this controller is working, but I'm holding this controller in front of me right now. I'm not pressing anything. Do you notice something? He's getting his butt kicked. He is constantly jumping because of my terrible prototyping wiring job. There is something being smushed against each other with a slightly exposed wire, probably, uh, probably from that first attempt of soldering with the really bad uh, solder. Uh, that's not definitely, that could just be one of the things, uh, but it is just the up button. All the other buttons are working just fine. Uh, so for some reason, the up and down are getting crossed uh, somehow, some way and causing it to stay on up. And yeah, it's just a matter of going back and through and going back over the solder and finding the point that's actually either bridged or whatnot. It didn't look too bridged or anything, but granted, for the most part, this is a prototype and it's really just show you guys how easy it is to build a fight stick. And this is a very thrown together video. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more complex videos on fighting sticks and we actually have done them already if you don't want to watch a really good one go check out our book fight stick that was done really well we took a lot of time and effort to make sure that was done right uh, a lot of fun making that video uh, this is more aligned just how do you can prototype your own fighting stick and the the faults that come with it sometimes uh, especially if you're using crappy solder uh, but yeah and if you haven't played ever played guilty air go check out guilty air um, but as you know Street Fighter 6 is out, so that is going to be the game you're probably going to see in future videos. Thank you for watching, everybody. Yes, this was a kind of thrown together video, but we had a lot of fun putting it together. Um, we didn't exactly take a whole lot of time to like pre-do the pre-build and stuff like that with it. It was more lines, hey, 3D printer, let's print some parts, let's prototype a fighting stick and show people how you can prototype a fighting stick pretty quickly and get it up and running. Granted, there's going to be a follow-up video. We're going to be doing a lot better fighting stick. There's going to be a lot of steps to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're actually going to have a guest on here who is a big enthusiast on the fighting sticks. Uh, and he actually is, he kind of seems like he wants to be part of the pro scene of fighting games. So he knows a thing too about fighting games. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to teach him how to solder. He's going to make a hitbox. He's never played with a hitbox before. So it'll be interesting to see his reaction when using a hitbox. Thank you for checking out this video. Remember to hit subscribe, like, comment, share it out. Because subscribe is only one step. Everybody has to know about the video. So share it out to social media wherever you are. And you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, all kinds of social media. And we also do a podcast every other week if you never checked it out. But this has been Tech Prime Media for a prototyping fight stick. See you in the next video.